welcome to Patriots Lament right here on KFAR. We are a local talk radio. A couple of different ways you can get involved in the program today. You can call in at 458-TALK, 458-8255, or you can join us online and uh, sound off through the chat room at KFAR660.com. We are also streaming live on our Facebook page, so there's a number of different ways you can participate today. Uh, Joining us now by phone from an undisclosed location, we've got... uh, one of the folks from Bighorn Enterprises, Josh Bennett. Josh, are you there? Yes, sir. All He's right. in my bunker. Good. good. Good good, to have you here. And, you know, it, it's nice to know that we have a continuity of government backup plan for uh, Patriots Lament, since everybody <laughs> else has that continuity thing going on. Uh, <laughs> I know we could go totally go off down a, a, a bunny trail with that little comment, but instead I'm going to turn it over to you and to Dave Giesel, who is here in the studio. Now, Dave is with the uh, Fairbanks campaign for liberty those are the folks that are generally associated with ron paul and uh other wing nuts right then oh yeah you know, wing nuts of all different different there, sorts there it is so uh gentlemen take it what's on your mind today um i first wanted to make a quick announcement relating to campaign for liberty there's a um ron paul strategy meeting at denny's at 3 p.m today so if you're interested in uh being a delegate at the state convention and things of that nature uh, for Ron Paul, go to Denny's at uh, 3 o'clock this afternoon. All right. There you go. And on, on a topic, I wanted to, on this first half hour, talk about the um, the Internet um, intellectual property bills that were uh, protested this week by Google and uh, YouTube and all those, the, uh, the SOPA and PIPA bill. And... So these were designed to supposedly protect um, intellectual property online, but in reality they they create the same police state online that we have in reality. You know, we have this one little bastion of of freedom in the virtual world, and it was an attempt to clamp that down. And uh, for people who aren't familiar with those, if they go to the blog at patriotslament.blogspot.com, the uh, top story on the blog is a little video that explains what those bills were all about and how they work to clamp down basically the entire Internet. So after the uh, protest day, um, those bills got shel- uh, shelved because basically massive uh, resistance. Everybody called their criminal in Congress <laughs> and uh, and told them, no, we don't want this. And so that was great. That was terrific. But the same at the same time, um, that next day, the uh, the authorities, as they are, the FBI, etc., um, organized a raid with New Zealand police to shut down um, MegaUpload.com and to arrest, uh, boy, like ten of its founders. They raided the 70 armed police raided 10 properties. That was uh, the story I read. And so, I think they confiscated $50 million worth of assets, too. Right, yeah. I, actually, I, I saw that they had taken $125 million. But whatever, yeah, they froze all their assets, took all their stuff. Um, and it, it was interesting. Just, the, like, the timing of it was all interesting. Because, you know, they were trying to get this bill through, and there's no popular sentiment behind it. You know, even the you know all the statists out there. I, I had a friend of mine who told me this. He was kind of disappointed because all of his statist, you know, authoritarian friends were um, in, uh, taking part in the protest. They're like, oh, they're trying to take away our freedom online. And he's like, well, it's great that you care about that, but it'd be nice if you cared about your other freedoms too. But anyway, so they encounter mass resistance, and they basically give up on these bills for now. And then the very next day, it's like they're trying to remind us, well, we can still do whatever we want uh, by going after this guy. It's like, well, those bills didn't pass, but we can still do whatever we want. What are you going to do about it? I think it's kind of strangely familiar, similar to uh, these bills are kind of after the fact, kind of like the NDAA. Right, after they start doing the things that are defined in the bill, then they propose a bill to make it legal. Right. You want to touch on uh, Anonymous? Yeah, so, um, and then this is kind of interesting from a, you know, a class warfare, I guess, standpoint. So right after the raid on the uh, mega upload guys and shutting them down, um, this internet group, um, Anonymous, launched all these cyber attacks on the Department of Justice website, the FBI website, the Patent and Trademark Office website, 
the Motion Picture Association of America, et cetera, et cetera. And they ended up shutting down like seven or eight sites uh, with these kind of distributed um, online attacks. And what's interesting is Anonymous is basically composed of basement dwelling nerds, you know, kind of antisocial, poor, um, young nerds. And the guys who run Mega Upload who were arrested in New Zealand were, you know, they're extraordinarily wealthy. And uh, the one guy's kind of a, a, you know, a classical playboy. And and so it's interesting because the the real class war, the class war that the state presents us is rich people, rich people versus poor people. And they're always trying to pit us against each other that way. But the real class war is voluntary versus the state. So this guy was running a a website where you could upload and download stuff and you know whatever whatever you put on it wasn't any of his business he didn't care he was just voluntarily offering a service and people were voluntarily using it and so you have you know very poor people coming to the defense of of wealthy people which which we're not supposed to do because you know those those are well, those classes are supposed to be opposed to each Help, other I'm being oppressed right and and the mega upload guy of course he's accused it, it, to show, you know, voluntary versus the state, which is involuntary. Uh, he was running this website, and, you know, people may or may not have been uploading stuff and downloading stuff that they shouldn't, but none of his business, you know, by, at least in his mind. And when when the state came to get him, they did something that he never did. They actually They actually cut through metal walls in his house and arrested him by pointing guns at him. And I, I don't think anywhere that he's been accused of doing that to any other people. So, you know, none of the people from Mega Upload or, you know, none of these anonymous nerds have broken into someone's house and pointed guns at them. And in order to take, you know, in order to take these people in for just, you know, voluntarily interacting with each other, the state has to resort to that. No, but if they're voluntarily interacting with illegal, with, with banned substances, Dave, then isn't it the state's responsibility to step in and stop them? Well, I mean, there are people who there are people who believe that, but it it. I mean, it's the same. It immediately becomes apparent um, which of those two groups is promoting violence, right? If, if we want to look at if we want to look at the class struggle as violence versus peaceful, right? Only one of those groups. You know, is is actually being violent and pointing guns at people and kicking doors in, and stealing, um, you know, real assets. And it's not, it's not anonymous, and it's not um, Kim dot com, the founder of Mega Upload. So, but, but where does it leave us? I mean, I think most people would recognize that. Yeah, we don't want private individuals to go and exert violence on each other. I mean, we're supposed to be living in a peaceful society, and that's why we entrust the government with the the monopoly of using force. I mean, that's what the state really is. I mean, philosophically speaking, if you read anything like the anatomy of the state, like we talked about last week, uh, the, the state, whatever that state is, whether it's a, literally a, a state or whether it's even just a group of people agreeing that, hey, this is how we're going to do it and we're going to have a sheriff, the state is the one that has the monopoly on the use of force. What, where does that leave us? I mean, if they're out there using force to stop people from voluntarily interacting because the state has decided that what they're voluntarily interacting on should not be allowed. I mean, basically what you're saying, Dave, is that you'd like to see any laws against prostitution or against drug use or against the importation or sale of alcohol or the use of tobacco by minors, any of these things. You'd like to see those repealed. Is that what you're saying? Well, I mean, even uh, even stepping back from that, if if you do accept that, you know, there has to be an institution of violence to keep everybody in check, in theory, the only time that they would need to use that or the only time it would be warranted is to prevent greater violence, right? If you wanted to make a, a utilitarian argument for uh, violent enforcement, it would be in order to stop greater violence from occurring. And in this case, it is just absolutely painfully clear that that is not the case. Um, you know, to your question, should should violence be used against all these you know nonviolent acts? No, I don't think it should be. Um, of course, the you know the utilitarian argument against for like drug the drug thing as well. If you let people use drugs, they'll be violent. Well, I mean that's historically not the case, but in this case specifically with the mega upload guys, it is it could not be more clear. 
And um, so I, I'm, I'm looking forward to uh, seeing and hearing from people who are defending the government's use of violence in taking these people in in the future because it's going to be funny because they have no moral, they have no utilitarian, and they have no ethical leg to stand on um, in their defense of the state's actions. At the very most, wouldn't it be a civil matter? At, a- at the very most, it would be a civil matter. And for the the supposed damaged parties are the uh, like the movie industry and things like this, right? Now, yeah. instead of and they they are you know well well healed, they have plenty of money, and instead of them um, taking this guy or this company to court with their own money, what did they do? They used everyone else's money um, through the FBI and these various police agencies to go after these guys. So they're economic rent seekers, too. Instead of them pursuing their own case with their own funds, which is what most of us would have to do, and, and you know, what we should do, um, they decided to use our money to solve their problem. Isn't that what the government always does, though? I mean, how how, how does the government get the funds to use nobody voluntarily goes out there and hires the government to do anything no 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 but but these these uh these institutions who were supposedly harmed could have gone about it in their own way they could have hired their own um you know investigators they could have taken their own case to court and instead they ask the state to do it for them which means that they are seeking damages not using you know their own funds but using your and my money. Isn't that what that happens at every level of government? And that happens locally, though, too. I mean, you, you see this happening with uh, the, the crackdown on wood stoves Yeah. In, in Fairbanks. You see it happening any time that a group of citizens goes to the government and says, you need to stop my neighbor from doing X, Y, or Z. It's because they don't want to go over there and man up a little bit and knock on their neighbor's door and say, hey, brother, your smoke is getting into my house. Right. And and. Typically, the excuse for that, the reason that they have to go to the borough or whatever, is because they don't have the money to bring a lawsuit forward. They don't have the money to hire an attorney, blah, 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 which is not actually true because if you in in most civil cases, when you win the case, the loser is the one who pays uh, the damages. And so if you have a really solid case, the the cost of the case is not really a problem if you're if you're pretty sure you're going to win. But I mean, in this particular case, um, you can't make the argument that, you know, the Motion Picture Association of America can't afford an attorney. Uh, that's just completely ridiculous. It's also pretty amazing. They, these guys, are, I mean, got to emphasize the fact they're in New Zealand. They use the FBI to get these guys in New Zealand. That's pretty amazing. You, you know, when you said that they used who to get those guys in New Zealand? They used the FBI, Josh? Well, yeah, the FBI is the one that uh, was pursuing this thing, and, they, and these guys aren't Americans, right? Well, isn't it nice to know that our law enforcement is being used to go out and get these dangerous criminals on the other side of the globe? I, I'm sure that was totally free, right? I mean, the, the travel for them to go there, and <laughs> obviously that was sarcasm. Oh. All right, are you get ready to take some phone calls? 458-TALK is the number. Josh, if somehow I hang up on you, please call back. We're going to try to make sure that this happens the right way, and it looks like uh, they did not hold. So that brings us back to you. Uh, We've only got about nine minutes here before the news on the bottom of the hour, and uh, Dave has gone down to let Aaron in. Uh, So as we continue on, Josh, let me ask you a question. Have you begun to think about an action point for today? I will start to think. You're going to start to think. All right. Uh, Dave Giesel back in the studio. Now joining us in here is Aaron Bennett from 4 North Tactical. Good morning. Good morning, Steve. Oh, hang on a second. I have to actually turn your microphone on. Let's try that again. Good morning, Aaron. Good morning, Steve. That's better. All right. Good to have you guys here. Uh, y- y- you know, when when we're talking about these overreaches of government, what, Dave, constitutionally is supposed to protect us from this kind of thing? I see the smoke in, coming out of in your In theory, um, the government is supposed to protect us from predatory um, people in society projecting violence at us. But what we're finding is that there's a uh, primary agency that, that does that, and it happens to be the one that's supposed to protect us from it. Oh, well, these guys are from New Zealand, so they wouldn't have any right. <laughs> I forgot. No, they, uh, no, I mean, don't you hear that with the terrorists, right? 
Well, but now they're, they've made move. I don't know where that legislation stands right now. I know it was before Congress a week or two ago that they've made a move to go out and actually strip citizenship away from anybody, even Americans, who uh, vocally disagree with the government, right? Yeah, I think it's still in committee right now. So that's that's always good to know that we've got that hang up, hang too loudly that really that can have our citizens stripped and and we can be uh, treated just like these other international criminals. The, there's another uh, interesting thing you you bringing that law up. That law is a follow up to the uh, NDAA. So a friend of mine at work was talking about which define the term the National Defense that's, Authorization. That's the one that we've been referring to as the Indefinite Detention Act. Right. And so a friend of mine at work was talking about the. You know the Google and Wikipedia blackout for the the SOPA and PIPA bills, and he's like, "What do you think about these?" And I, I kind of told him, and he's like, "I think they're ridiculous. This is insane." And I was like, "Well, you know about the National Defense Authorization Act for 2012, right?" And he's like, "What?" You know, he, hadn't, know, I, he I, hadn't heard of it. He what? hadn't heard of it, so I had him look it up, and um, it was hilarious because he he was speechless for like five minutes. Um, I was like, "Yeah, SOPA and PIPA are their their child's play, man." compared to what's already passed with, you know, nary a whimper from the general public. Um, so he was he was pretty blown away by that. He had no idea. <laughs> All right, 458-TALK is the number. We're going to go back to the phones again. Good morning, caller. Who's this? Hello, this is Bill. Bill, go ahead. What's on your mind? Um, when you go to rent a movie, the first thing that movie says is, this movie is copyrighted. So, if you're on the internet and you don't see no signs saying that this stuff is copyrighted, I don't see why you're not allowed to use it or copy it or download it or whatever. Does uh, does the sign make it so? I mean, if if you are going onto somebody else's property and they haven't posted a no trespassing sign, are you are does that mean you're not trespassing? Uh, I think if you was trespassing on somebody's property and there is no sign there, you you can't be convicted. I know about that. Yeah, you could make you could certainly make the argument that you're not aware. But yeah. even yeah, I mean even if. Um, a lot of the material on these sites has no copyright or anything like that. Um, but even if it does, the company that runs the site doesn't upload any of the information or download any of the information. They just provide a place for people to do that. So if someone's putting stuff online illegally, um, that would fall on the person who has put the stuff online illegally, right? Not not the company that hosts it. If you're gonna if you're gonna go after the company that provides a service, then you're making Every company that provides an email service or a web hosting service, a policeman, you're making them all wards of the state. They all have to do the state's enforcement. Don't they already do that, though, with alcohol? I mean, you think about it. Why do we have to show our IDs? And they have right. to they have to check the IDs, not just for age, but to make sure that we haven't had one of those little stripes added to our ID that says that we are forbidden to buy alcohol. Yep. And so now it's the alcohol, the, 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 the beverage stores are also turned into police, aren't they? Yeah. And you have a similar issue with um, a sales tax. A sales tax turns every businessman into an IRS agent. So in that thinking, we might as well have every restaurant in town strip search everybody to make sure no drugs or firearms come in. I know. That would make me feel better. I, I would feel safer. That's for sure. Thanks for the call. Appreciate it, Bill. 458-TALK is the number. Good morning, caller. Who's this? This is Will Finley. Will, go ahead. Hey, can I do a shameless plug for a Ron Paul meetup today? Uh, yeah, we, we already did, but go ahead. All right. Uh, we're encouraging people to show up at Denny's at 3 p.m. We're going to talk about how to get Ron Paul, one of our liberty-supporting individuals, into office. Cool. Yeah. Uh, you guys are going to talk about the convention process and all that stuff? That's correct. We're going to talk about the, the convention process, um, just the basics of uh, parliamentary procedure so we can feel comfortable going into the district conventions making sure that uh, Ron Paul delegates can get to the state convention and, and then on to the uh, national convention. Excellent. Hey, Will, is it too late to change your party affiliation? No. In fact, on the day of the convention, March 6th, you can sign up. And as long as we have proof that you have joined the Republican Party, you can still vote in the uh, presidential preference poll. 
And this is where a major part of our uh, supporters have come from. They're undeclared, they're independents, and they're nonpartisans. And those individuals are convinced that, you know, the elections are won in November. But that's not true. You uh, need to uh, vote in the presidential preference poll to get those delegates so that we can get Ron Paul as the Republican candidate that goes up against the Democrat. Unfortunately, we're in a corrupt system, but uh, this is the best way we can uh, operate to make sure we get a liberty-minded individual into office. Well, I, and this is this is Steve speaking to you here on a, on a personal level. I have a really hard time joining a political party, e- even if it is specifically to support a man who, who I, I really believe has a chance of, of making a difference. I, w- I would still be, if I were to join the Republican Party, I, I feel like I would be compromising my principles. How do you address that? Because, I, I mean, I'm, you're not convincing me. Go ahead. Okay. Um, you're not giving money to the Republican Party. You're just uh, filling out a form. And uh, I understand it, it's uh, kind of repulsive for some individuals. But at the same time, <laughs> uh, we're in the system. I mean, the, the system exists, and so we have to deal with it. Uh, stepping outside of it, the, the two-party system has a monopoly that will not allow other political parties to participate. Uh, we, we've seen that over and over again. It's just very hard to uh, get into office and try, try to make a difference. So basically, you got to hold your nose and uh, get a little bit of mud on you and uh, sign up for one of those parties. And in this case, it's the Republican Party. You, you make it sound so attractive. Gee, come on in and let's get you all dirty. And, and then help, you know, we'll help you trample down your principles. Not a problem. Come on, Will. You're not, you're not you can, helping uh, yourself here. You can, if well, you're not going to go to the convention, if you just want to vote in the primary, you can change your registration back the next day. Well, no, like, not, not, not quite, because they're going to be checking that. And so you want to basically be Republican for like a period of time so that you know that basically make sure we get past the, the state convention, which is April 26th through the 28th, uh, before you change back if you're going to do that uh, procedure. Um, but, but keep in mind, there are those of us who are purists. Even though we're Republicans, we're, we're signed up for that party, uh, we are still trying to stay true and pure to, to the liberty movement. And, and one other thing, there are those people in the Republican Party. We have to appreciate them because they are keeping it alive. They are the ones that are meeting every Friday and uh, giving us a forum so that we can have this opportunity to basically go up against what we, what we see on the other side of the aisle, uh, which gets a lot of uh, government support like the, the unions and so forth, using that money that comes from the government just to fill their coffers and then continue their political campaigns. All right, hey on. we got to take a break here for the Fox News. we got more to come on the other side on KFAR. This is Patriot's Lament on 660 on your AM dial. Welcome back to Patriots Lament right here on KFAR. We are local talk radio, and uh, joining us on the phone, we've got Josh Bennett from Bighorn Enterprises. Good morning, Josh. Back in yellow and black. Back in yellow and black. Also, we've got, uh, from Far North Tactical, we've got Aaron Bennett. And from the Fairbanks uh, Campaign for Liberty, we've got uh, Dave Giesel. All right, Dave. Um, uh, You... Have been a a, a staunch advocate for not participating in the party process and in the the, the political exchange here. Uh, has Ron Paul turned you into a believer? Uh, well, I, four years ago, yeah, and then I went to the state convention, and uh, it, for anybody who hasn't been to the state convention, it's worth going once um, because the level of uh, pettiness and corruption and stupidity in uh, local politics, you know, state politics, is far beyond anything you can possibly imagine. And unless you actually attend one of those, um, you really can't appreciate just how stupid it is. Um, that said, we did have uh, the hundred or so Ron Paul delegates did have a fairly large impact in making the old guard very upset at the convention. And so that was that was funny to watch. Um, so for anybody who hasn't gone to that, who wants to go as a Ron Paul delegate, I would highly encourage it. 
Um, I myself will not be going to the state convention uh, this year. But all right. That being said, uh, Josh, anything you'd like to say before we go on to another phone call? That was really funny what Dave just said. I was just thinking about, uh, you know, we were talking about soap a little while ago and laws and this and that. And now with uh, talking about Ron Paul for a second, I like, I don't know if anyone's been following the guys that he's running against, in particular Rick Santorum. Is it if, you know, Dave, you want to briefly talk about him or not, but some of the things that he has said, he is absolutely, you know, he, he would make Obama look like a liberty-loving guy. And that guy is absolutely, Santorum absolutely believes the state is put into place to tell you exactly what you will and will not do. Almost like having, basically like having the Roman Catholic Church in charge of your life. Yeah, he had a he had a quote um, a couple weeks ago where he said, the obedience to the state is happiness, or, or something right along those lines. Yeah. But 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 wouldn't he be the, the moral choice for president? I mean, he, he's against... Uh, abortion, and he's against homosexual marriage. Nah, I don't think he's even against abortion. I strongly believe that a lot of, if not a majority, of Republicans in power use the abortion issue just like anyone, just like cancer researchers use cancer research money. As long as they get that research money, why would they find a cure? It's just the same as why would those guys want to repeal Roe versus Wade, what would they stand up for then? What could they possibly go and say, I'm pro-life. Well, that's not an issue anymore. Oh, dang it. They're, they're all, well, yeah, Santorum is a big fan of uh, extraordinarily late-term abortion, like post, right. post-birth post abortion, <laughs> um, especially if you happen to live in a country in the Middle East. He's all for post-birth abortion. Are you talking about war? Yeah. Okay. Well, last week he said that he would also get rid of contraceptions in the United States. Rick Santorum did. He actually said that if, as president, he would get rid of contraceptives. Where? <laughs> really? I heard him. I heard him accused of saying that. Uh, and I, I, you know, here's the thing. I saw I, the, I watched the YouTube clip just two days ago. He really said it. The guy is a psychotic. <laughs> and Ron Paul's been trying to get uh, Bill passed. This is where I'm taking the where I'm getting my idea that they don't want Roe versus Wade to be repealed. Because Ron Paul, every year, well, for at least the last ten years, I know, has tried to pass present a bill that would immediately strip the Supreme Court of its jurisdiction over the abortion issue, which would immediately overturn Roe versus Wade. Santorum voted against it every time. When he was a senator, every time Ron Paul put it up, when we had a Republican-controlled House, Senate, and a Republican president, all of them that said they were running on a pro-life platform, how come he couldn't get it passed? He couldn't even get it through committee. Couldn't get it up for a vote. I watched the debates the other day, and they were saying, oh, Mr. Paul Santorum actually said, you know, you have a horrible record. You can't get anything passed. Well, whose fault is that? I mean, that's a... That's a damning to the pe- to the Republican Party, I'd say, because they own the House and the Senate and the presidency for six years, and Ron Paul couldn't even pass any liberty legislation then. He couldn't even pass anything that would directly and immediately repeal Roe versus Wade. So do those guys really want that passed? Do they really want it restricted or overturned? Or do they want it always there so they can keep getting money from their pro-life groups and keep the corporation going. I mean, why yeah. would they want to repeal it? It's a political football. Oh, yeah. It's a good one. It's mm-hmm. a lot of money. Very emotional issue, and it generates a lot of money. So why would they repeal it? They haven't, and they had the chance to for six years. 458-TALK is the number. We go back to the phones. Good morning, caller. Who's this? It's John. John, what's on your mind? Hey, uh, this is Ron Paul meeting it. Denny's. Is that the same Denny's where uh, Schaefer Cox wanted to hold his kangaroo court? And <laughs> the, assa- and the, the one and only. And assassinate the federal judge and the state troopers? 
I yeah, I don't think that's Denny's fault though. <laughs> yeah, I think no, we should I think we should make Denny's sort of, check people politically before they come in. Well, and, make them check make them check their guns at least <laughs> at the door. Have we have, have we had a problem with people armed in Denny's actually causing any problems? I mean, is this? Well, a, the only the only real problem I've seen is lousy coffee. <laughs> <laughs> And a kangaroo court in the back room. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thanks for the call. Four five no eight problem. dog is the number. Good morning, caller. Who's this? Lisa. Lisa, good morning. <laughs> hey, you guys missed your calling as uh, barn painters and sous chefs with your broad brushes and your ridiculous reductions. Oh, yeah. Because um, the uh, Ron Paul's uh, new Confederate States rights push would just allow the abortion to relocate in other states and sanctity of life is from the declaration (laughs) of independence which means it's a federal issue because it concerns all of us did the federal government exist at the time of the writing of the declaration of independence no but you see how how many years were between lisa hang on steve can you can you work this yeah go ahead pause pause okay there we go yeah. Um, how many years passed between the Declaration of Independence and the ratification of the Constitution, Lisa? Can you answer me that? Uh, I mean, am I potted back up, Democrats? You, uh, wow. Um, at the moment, since we pay for the show, we get to run the phones. <laughs> Go ahead, Lisa. You can answer the question or you can pass. You can see these uh, framers of the Constitution were evangelicals, almost to the man. And they so got there's a question that's lying out there. How long do, was there between the, the Declaration of Independence and the ratification of the Constitution? Certain things. Simple question. Lisa, can you answer the question? Federally. This Lee? was pursuit of life and the sanctity and dignity of life. All right. Thank you for not answering the question. Bye-bye. Well, I'm done with you. I'm, yeah, I'm just, I, can't, uh, I can't do it today. There's another question there, too, um, which, which we're not going to get around to, unfortunately. But it's uh, did the Constitution actually create the federal government? In the, in the way that we think of it. The Constitution actually did not create a federal government. It created a federation of states, which is distinctly different from a federal government. A federation of states, all of the power is still vested in the states, and they get together to agree or disagree on certain issues, and it's essentially non-binding. There's very little binding authority in the Constitution. Well, that's what the Tenth Amendment was supposed to be about, right? Well, that's what the, the Bill of Rights was sort of, yeah, the Tenth Amendment specifically, um, reserving powers to the states. But uh, the, the Bill of Rights specifically was s- spelling out that um, the Constitution did not take all these rights for the for the federal government. And it really wasn't a federal government. It was a federation, which is a a uh, basically a forum where different parties meet to agree on things or disagree on things. And the right to secede was implicit at the Constitutional Convention, um, which it is not implicit in the federal government as it exists today. So if you're going to talk about the federal government and the founders in the same sentence, um, that's a confused stance because by the time the federal government came to exist in the way we think of it, all of the founders were dead. So... uh, What? Wasn't the... uh, Wasn't abortion made legal under the federal government? I'm having a hard time understanding what the heck she was getting out there. Ron Paul wants to reverse, overturn Roe versus Wade. So what? We're not going to do it because, oh, he wants to send it to the state. So let's just let 40 million babies be aborted every year. He would overturn it immediately. What is there to argue with that? even, Even if it wasn't, you know, right now by federal mandate, it's legal in 50 states, right? Correct. Exactly. So even if it was removed from the federal government's purview and remained legal in 50 states, how is that worse? Well, then, I think what you're dealing with with a person like Lisa is the same kind of a person who, like Rick Santorum, wants to, instead of giving the states the opportunities to decide whether or not they want to make something like that legal or illegal, so he wants it to be illegal by federal decree. Which, but he wouldn't do that, um, just like George Bush didn't do that. Right. I mean, but Lisa would. Uh, no, she, mm, yeah, okay. It, I, I, mean, I don't hard, think it's, so. It's hard to be unequivocally pro-life if there's no abortion. I'm just saying, we can't get rid of it. Then none of us could be pro-life anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just make the anger when she called him a child Bob. What, is, what has she ever done about abortion? She uh, tried to call and say that Ron Paul is for abortion, which is absurd. I support Ron Paul, and I've been in jail several times over the abortion issue, protesting it. Has anyone else done that on the show here? 
Anyone listening? Lisa, how many times have you gone to jail? I've gone to jail several, several times over and over and over again protesting abortion because I hate it. So don't call our show and tell us that we're pro-choice or we want to kill babies because it's a lie. We want to repeal it. Ron Paul would repeal it immediately. So don't call up in your stupid self-righteousness and tell us when you haven't done jack. And I have. We have. Don't even call again. <laughs> I'm glad you get Thoughts. so uh, passionate about it, there, John. Yeah. All right, four five eight talk is the number. We get back to the phones. Good morning, caller. Good morning, Miss Al. Al, thanks for calling in. What's on your mind? Oh, I just thought I'd give you an update. We had a small victory just last week at the board of game with uh, the taxidermy and and the board of game trying to take away our civil liberties. And so what happened was law enforcement pulled their proposal. Oh, good. So it wasn't even discussed what was the bad part of it, though. Well, it, it's kind of similar, like, to the charges being dropped against the fellow for the Meat for Heat case. Yeah. You know, yeah, we're that just, didn't uh, come from law enforcement. That came from higher up. We're, we're just going to drop it, and there, therefore we're, we're just not going to address it right now. It hasn't really addressed the issue, though. So in far, as far as I'm concerned, Al, even though you may have had, you may consider it a victory. No, I said that, a small victory. That they, uh, that they backed off from the case. We still haven't won. No, they're going to try to skin that cat a different way and go down a different avenue of government to get that in place. No way. That's pretty sweet, though. I mean, Alan, I think you've been a pretty major force behind that. You'd have to be, because you, you've got it out in the public's eye for sure. It's, yeah. Every little victory is a victory, that's all. Yeah, no, it was, you know, it was, you know, they didn't take it up, so they're going to try a different avenue. And But, you know, what was re- unique about this is through this research of this, I found, you know, several documents that, uh, case law that supported that the inspections like OSHA inspections are, are illegal without a warrant. Yeah, Al actually dropped those off by at my store, and I re- uh, looked into him myself. He's uh, he's right about that. OSHA has no um, no legal authority to come and inspect your job site. And so, you know, that, that can, with, with case law like that, now you can run that by the borough and all these little inspections they're trying to impose on people for getting in their houses or the property or whatever. People just have to take a stand. You know, this fellow in Anchorage that had this court case took a stand and won. You know, I think I've I think I've heard that the borough has never um, taken a case to court, or they never won a case in court. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, it's a paper tiger. I think they've never won a case in court because they I know they've been in uh, court a number of times. And okay. uh, what a lot of people don't realize is that the whole point of the borough, as a, as the defined by the Alaska Constitution. The whole point of it is to make it so that the state can administer better. The whole point of it is for tax collection. Mm -hmm. There are three powers that the state adjudicates to the borough. Everything else that we've given them from animal control, that's not not one of the original, to parks and recreation, to the, the new air pollution measures, every single power that they've either taken upon themselves by voting themselves the power or that we've given them by voting them the power, Every single one of those powers, except those original three in terms of taxation and uh, platting and planning, everything else is pure fiction. All right. Thanks for the call, Al. 458-TALK is the number. Good morning, caller. Welcome to Patriots Lament. Who's this? Uh, this is John David. John, thanks for calling I gotta, in. i got to say something about what you started the show with, the copyright uh, laws that the that the Internet... Uh, seems to think are non-existent. Um, I mean, to me, the internet just looks like a wild and woolly, like like you would think Abilene or Dodge City back in the 1870s was. It's 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 just lawless. But what you ought to look at is America was the first country that had a patent office, the first country that had copyrights. It took the movie industry almost 20 years to gain copyright protection for their movies. And then along comes the Internet, and all of a sudden, all that stuff is supposed to be forgot about. Well, I say this to all those people who think they have the utter right to download music and movies and everything else off the Internet for free. Go out and make your own movie just once. Just see how much it costs you. Write a book and see how much trouble it is to yeah, get it well, published. I, let's talk about books. Um, let's take that one. Um, since the advent of 
of ebooks on Amazon and, and other places. Um, there's a lot of authors who are actually publishing books at very low cost to themselves who could never afford uh, to get a book through a publishing house. And it's the same with the iTunes Music Store. There's all sorts of artists who are actually making a living now who would never get signed on a label because they don't have the right connections and they don't have enough money to do oh, it. I understand. So, so it's a decentralizing force. Um, that's actually equalizing people's access to the marketplace. Now, of course, this this comes at the expense of the establishment, the establishment in radio, the establishment in uh, movie distribution and things like this. Um, but just because a force is decentralizing and challenges the status quo and these legally established monopolies of the airwaves and of the you know the record companies and the movie studios, um, which have the state defending them, as we've seen in this case, with the FBI going after these people, not private investigators. Just because they're challenging the status quo doesn't mean it's a bad thing. And if we want to talk about technology and progress, um, as you were trying to go down that road with the patent office, we would have to credit the Internet, despite its shortcomings, with pushing this forward much faster than it would have otherwise. Well, I, I'd like to add, too, in terms of the issue of uh, the free exchange of ideas, if you look at what happened prior to the invention of the printing press, and go all the way back to that, in terms of the advances of technology, if you have to depend on what the king tells you or what the king's man tells you, are, are you going to be more or less free? Thanks for the call. 458-TALK is the number. Good morning, caller. Who's this? This is Randy. Randy, good morning. What's on your mind? Well, uh, I kind of like Rick Santorum. Uh, I like all of them, okay, you know, over Obama, of course. Uh, but I must say, when I saw that debate, that CNN debate on Thursday, I guess it was Thursday night, between the four remaining Republican candidates, and there was the exchange between Rick Santorum and Ron Paul on the abortion issue, in which Rick Santorum tried to come out and say that uh, Ron Paul wasn't very pro-life or whatever he said, something like that. I had, to str I had to agree strongly with the position of Ron Paul on that issue, because I do think Rick Santorum would like to have a federal law banning abortion, and I, I, I disagree with that, because I think it should not be federal jurisdiction, it should be the state's rights. And uh, on Ron Paul's position on abortion, I was looking here in Wikipedia, where they discuss all of his positions on everything. And it says uh, here, he says, um, uh, it says, Paul has said that the Ninth and Tenth Amendment to the U.S. Constitution do not grant the federal government any authority to legalize or ban abortion, stating that the federal government has no authority whatsoever to involve itself in the abortion issue. However, this has not stopped Paul from voting in favor of a federal ban on partial birth abortion in 2000 and 2003. But I guess the reason he did that even though maybe the feds have no business in that, is such a horrific thing. And it, it really just negates part of the meddling of Roe versus Wade. So I, I think that was okay for him to vote that way. But as far as uh, uh, I've been wondering about this thing, I hear about uh, Rick Santorum wanting to outlaw contraception. I just now Googled it. I'm over on abcnewsgo.com, and it said that he would not ban it, though he's against it himself because of his Catholic faith. He does think the states have a right to do what they want and that the federal court should not interfere, and I would kind of agree with that, but I think that he would oppose any legislation state, state-wise, state-level, or federal-level against uh, contraception. All right. Thanks, Randy, for your uh, input today. 458-TALK is a number. Good morning, caller. Who's this? Hello. Hey, who is this? Yeah, this is Mike. Mike, what's on your mind? Oh, just uh, listening to your show, Aaron, about the abortion. I'm not a fan of abortion myself, but is that was that other caller correct? There's 40 million a year in America. Yes. Okay, throw this out there, and if that did not happen, what would this country look like in 20 years? It would probably be a lot more black. One of the things that people fail to recognize is that the vast majority of abortions are carried out against minorities. In, the, in this country. It is a method of controlling the minority population, as it was originally proposed by Margaret Sanger. And for people who, who try to make it sound like it is an, an issue of freedom, of choice for the woman, it is really more of a method of keeping the minorities a minority. And if you don't believe that, uh, look into the actual numbers and the racial makeups of those who get abortions, and you will see for yourself, and you can make your own mind up. Well, I'm um 
not arguing. I don't know anything about that point, but I'm just thinking, will we be able to feed that many people if in 20 years we had a billion people in this country? I, would we be able to sustain ourselves? I, that's a that, that's an interesting question because I anybody who who argues for zero population growth I think is a fool. I mean, if you look at the actual methods of uh, food production, how many places, how many people, how many farmers are we paying not to farm right now? Do you, do you know off the top of your head? I, I know, no, but I know America. We can feed a lot of people, and we fed most of the world for a lot of years. Yeah, we and but, and, and we could we could feed a heck of a lot more if we would get the the government out of uh, the controlling of the the distribution of the food process. I mean, an awful lot of that question of oh, how could we feed them is something that has been engineered by those who want to try to keep control over the population. Aaron, were you going to say seven, something? 7% of America is currently in agriculture, and um, less than half of those are, or more than half of those are being subsidized and not farming at all. Interesting. Thanks for the call. Appreciate your input. 458-TALK is a number if you've got something to add to the discussion. We've got only about five minutes left here, gentlemen. Do we have an action point yet for today? Uh, I would encourage people to go. I think uh, part of the thing that was missed, maybe I just missed, over the SOPA law is it's way more draconian than just the piracy. Um, Dave posted a fantastic thing by Simon Khan on our website, or just Google it if you want. Um, it has a lot more to do than just trying to stop piracy, uh, online piracy. The thing is, they want to take over the Internet. The government wants to control the Internet because... It's a free place for information, free exchange of ideas. You can Google, I mean, we can have a website and put up whatever we want, whether they like it or not. And if you look at uh, that video and it shows how all these, the way the law is written, everything gets intertwined, they can shut down the whole Internet if they chose to with that law. Am I off base, Dave? No. I mean, one of the things the Internet makes apparent is that ideas are not scarce. Um, if I, if you post an article on Patriot's Lament and I copy-paste that article into my blog, I'm not depriving you of having that on your blog at the same time. It's a non-scarce um, idea, right? And because of this, I mean, that's why the Internet, that's why there's such a free flow of information, is there's no scarcity. And because there's no scarcity, you can't have property rights in the classical sense. You, you know, there's not... You having an idea doesn't exclude me from having it. And so SOPA and PIPA um, go after that by saying, well, if you copy and paste this, you may not have deprived, you know, the Patriot Cement blog from having its article, but you've infringed on some nebulous idea of copyright, and so therefore you're a violator. And if someone posts a link to your site, which is violating um, whatever, on your site, then your site's in violation too, you know. So if a blog commenter posts a link to a site that has... Uh, whatever copyright protected information, suddenly your site becomes um, uh, able to be shut down, I guess. And so it doesn't even have to be intentional or even you doing it. It's just if you have an open site where people can come and discuss, um, you're basically exposed to these, which all, all the sites that are worth going to are the sites where there's an open discussion. That's the whole point of the Internet. All right, 458-TALK is the number. we got some late calls coming in, so we can squeeze them in before the end of the show. Good morning. Who's this? Hey, good morning, Frank Kearney. Good morning, Frank. Thanks What's on your mind? Show. Uh, I just want to make attention. You won't see this in News Minor, but uh, Ron Paul, January 18th, introduced a bill in the Congress to repeal the National Defense Authorization Act, Section 1021. You could probably Google it and find it. I was just wondering if the three stooges, Murkowski, Beggage, and Young, would support Paul's repeal. Since they voted, uh, since they voted for, let's see if we can turn them around. <laughs> Good luck with that, Frank. Really? Thanks, <laughs> thanks hey, for the ma'am. call. Four five eight talk is the number. Good morning. Who's this? Is this the legalized criminality show of the anarchist wine of variety? Uh, no, actually, it's the you already called once bye bye show. All right, <laughs> <laughs> go ahead, gentlemen. We got uh, less than a minute what's, left. What's criminality? That's an interesting question. We could do a whole show on that. That's a whole show right there. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, so our action point today is what, just to go to the the, the website? Is there anything more that you're going to ask our listeners to do today, John? Um, if you're interested in the political process, um, it would be worth going to um, that meeting at Denny's uh, the, where they're going to talk about the state convention and the local conventions. Um, so that's at 3 o'clock at Denny's, the Ron Paul meetup. 
Um, but yeah, also you yeah, go on the blog and watch the the Sopa Pipa thing because it's it's not well understood what exactly that entails. This is not just going after somebody who's putting up a MP3 or something. It's it's going after everybody. Aaron, anything to add? No, I'm I'm <laughs> still confused by Lisa. <laughs> All right, Dave, uh, contact information. So the blog is patriotslament.blogspot.com. And the email is patriotslament at gmail.com. And we have a YouTube channel, which is Radio Free Fairbanks. And uh, at that one, you're going to have, I just gave you uh, the last two weeks of shows, which would normally have been posted on the KFAR website, but because the, uh, the website's kind of uh, going through a transition right now, we don't have those up. But those I just gave you on your flash drive, so yep. you're going to get those up on uh, the YouTube channel, which again says. Radio, Radio Free Fairbanks is a YouTube channel. And email contact quickly. Uh, PatriotsLament at gmail.com. All right. Thank you, gentlemen, for being here. And uh, thanks, Josh, for calling in. Are you going to be back in the studio next week? Yes, sir. All right. Wonderful. Aaron, thanks for being here. Remember to check out Far North Tactical over there at the uh, corner of 8th and Lacey. And if you'd like to have some construction work done, you can call Big Horn Enterprises. Uh, of course, uh, because of their sponsorship, the, we can put this show on the air. And if you're interested in uh, helping to sponsor this program, you can email me here at the studio, Steve Floyd at KFAR660.com. We can let you know how that'll work.